Hello, welcome to my channel, and today we will be testing and comparing four of Canon's popular 100 to 400 or 500 millimeter class telephoto zoom lenses, plus an EF extender as a bonus for their suitability on the Canon mirrorless R series, hopefully assisting those looking to purchase a telephoto or contemplating an upgrade. If you want to dive right into the tests or conclusions, check the chapter bar at the bottom of the video or the description for the relevant timestamps. Otherwise, let's introduce our four lenses and the testing parameters. First, the commonalities of these four lenses. All are variable aperture and all externally zoom. However, this comes with the benefit of compactness at the minimum focal length. They are roughly of similar size and all feature lens stabilization that makes handheld photography and some videography possible. Autofocus is driven by ultrasonic motors, or USM, though due to technological improvements, the autofocus gets faster and quieter as the lenses get newer, and every lens has a manual focus switch. All but the RF 100-400 are the high-end L series and as such are weather sealed, come new with a hood and tripod collar, and take a 77mm filter and lens cap size. Those three L lenses also come with a focus limiter, a zoom ring tightener, and three lens stabilization options for general purpose, panning, and being on moving objects such as boats. I have determined the estimated ages of all four lenses using the serial numbers or date codes. Bear in mind that sometimes early copies of lenses may show more negative variants than later ones. Our first lens is the venerable EF 100-400L series F4.5 to F5.6 Mark I. This has a trombone style push-pull zoom mechanism, which many seem to dislike. I have read about this zoom method being a dust pump, and it can be certainly disruptive when used with a tripod. The manual focus ring and zoom tightener also moves as you zoom, another annoyance. The focus limiter limits the lens from 6.5 feet to infinity. The lens weighs about 3 pounds, with the body itself being very solidly built with metal, and an analog focus scale is present. This lens comes new with a hood, tripod collar, and carrying case. The tripod collar can be fully removed if you want to save volume and weight. And yes, the color is naturally off-white, and not due to age. This lens was first released in 1998, and has a reputation for early copies being soft. My copy, however, was manufactured in August 2007. This lens has been discontinued, but can be found around $600 US dollars used. The EF 100-400L series F4.5 to F5.6 Mark II is next, and in almost all respects is a direct improvement over the Mark I. We again have the analog zoom scale, but now have a twist zoom, but you can still push-pull to extend if you wish. The manual focus ring and zoom tightener no longer move outwards as you zoom. The focus limiter now limits from 10 feet to infinity. Again, we have a metal body, and this is the heaviest of the four with a weight of over 3.5 pounds. The updated hood now has a window for adjusting variable filters. The tripod collar cannot be fully removed, but the foot alone can, which cuts down on the volume. Note that the Mark II is thought to have an actual focal length of around 380 millimeters, perhaps due to focus breathing, and as you will see later, this lost focal length is indeed noticeable in comparisons. This lens was first released in December 2014, and my copy was manufactured in November 2022. This lens can be bought new for 2400 US dollars, or around 1300 used. The RF 100-500 f4.5 to f7.1, in addition to having an extra 100mm of focal length, is also lengthwise the longest of the four, though not by much, and when you factor in the necessary EF adapter to use on the R bodies, it ends up being comparable to the other two L lenses. 
We still have a twist zoom near the end, and you can still push pull to extend. The manual focus ring is near the base, and note that manual focusing is now focused by wire, or controlled electronically instead of mechanically like the EF versions. This means that the lens needs to be powered to focus. The zoom tightener ring is now ridged and much easier to fine tune than its predecessors. The exterior analog zoom scale of the EF lenses is now gone, and instead you have the option to display an electronic zoom scale on the camera screens. A control ring that can be customized for a number of uses is located at the very base of the lens. The focus limiter still limits from 10 feet to infinity. A stabilizer now seems to detect whether the lens is tripod mounted and automatically shuts down when it is, which is a very handy feature in my opinion. The body now has a plastic shell over metal, which doesn't transfer heat or cold to the hands like the EF lenses did, and it still feels solidly built with a weight of around 3.3 pounds. The hood is now white, but still has the window for adjusting filters. The tripod collar can now be completely removed to drop the weight to 3 pounds. Note that if you plan on using teleconverters, this lens will be locked at 300mm minimum, which might wreck the storability for you. This lens was released in August 2020, and my copy was manufactured in March 2023. Prices currently go for around $2,600 new, around $2,300 used to refurbish, and very rarely drop to below $2,000 during Canon's refurb sales. The RF 100-400, f5.6 to f8, is the smallest of the 4 by 4 and also the darkest. It's got a giant twist zoom now near the base, and can still be optionally push-pulled to zoom. The control ring is now located at the end, and the dedicated manual focus ring in between. Again, manual focus is focused by wire. Instead of the zoom ring tightener, there is a lock switch to help prevent zoom creep. There is no analog zoom scale, only electronic in screen, and there is no weather sealing, focus limiter, different stabilizer modes, tripod collar, or included hood. The lens body is almost completely plastic, and the build quality feels much cheaper than the other lenses. However, at 1.4 pounds, this is much lighter than the other three. In my opinion, this lens has the best control layout of the four, and if you purchase a lens hood, this is the only one that you can twist zoom while the hood is reversed. This is the newest lens, released in October 2021 and the test copy was manufactured June 2023. This lens goes for $650 new, around $550 used or refurbished, and occasionally as low as $350 during Canon's refurbished sales. In the interest of brevity, from this point forward, I will be referring to the EF lenses as EF Mark I and EF Mark II respectively, and the RF lenses as RF400 and RF500. So be aware that I am not referring to prime lenses. The extender EF 1.4 Mark III will be simply referred to as the 1.4 extender. As most people purchase these telephotos to primarily use at maximum focal length, I will only be testing that in this video. The RF500, however, will often be dropped to 400mm to offer a better direct comparison with the other three lenses, and a text label will indicate when this happens. These tests were done on the APS-C models R7 and R10, but the results should be mostly applicable to the full frame models as well. Autofocus performance in stills mode is filmed either through the Canon Connect app or through a second camera filming the LCD screen. The shooting parameters have been kept as consistent as possible during comparisons, and the exact settings will be shown on screen prior to the tests, so be prepared to pause if you want to study them in detail. Let's finally begin with the image quality comparisons. We're using a base 4K crop from the full 7K images taken with the Canon R7, 
a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor. A tripod was used, and its location or height were not changed throughout the entire test. The camera itself was the attachment point, so we didn't have variability in height and distance from the tripod collars. Lens stabilization was turned off for each lens as well. The shutter speed is low, so I used electronic shutter mode and the Canon Connect app's remote shooting feature to eliminate human shake. ISO is set to 100 to offer the maximum image quality. I attempted to focus every lens on the exact same spot on this fake flower, though as you'll see the narrow depth of field meant that the plane of focus ended up being slightly different in some shots. You'll notice the far F400's perspective looks different from the others. I suspect this may be due to the lens's smaller size and actual focus lens being close to the maximum advertised, unlike for say the EF Mark II. The EF Mark I did surprisingly well here considering its age. I've read that newer copies of this lens can be almost as sharp as the Mark II, which seems to bear out in these results. Image quality suffered poorly with the 1.4 extender attached to it, however, unlike its Mark II successor. Even so, the RF 100-500 stayed the sharpest lens here even when cropped to match the 560mm teleconverted length on the EF lenses. The reverse was not true, however, as cropping the EF Mark II to 500mm fared poorly in comparison. The RF 100-400 is similar in quality to the Mark I stopped down to F8, which is a pretty good showing for a budget non-L series lens, though at the cost of an extra stop of light. Bear in mind that for these tests, we've cropped in quite a bit on a 4K image itself cropped from a 7K one. We're well within the realms of pixel peeping here. Unless you're regularly cropping your photos deeply, you will find the image quality similar between these four lenses. Since the maximum aperture differs between the lenses, I've opted to match the brightest common denominator during these tests. If you're curious about how much brighter the EF lenses can be, here's a short showcase of the F5.6 through F8 on the EF Mark II. Now we will compare the handheld lens stabilization. Canon's in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, supposedly works with lens stabilization differently with EF and RF lenses. See this chart from Canon Europe for the details. Since only some Canon R-series bodies have IBIS, I'll be testing one with the R7 and one without the R10. In every instance, I stood about 20 feet from the subject, held the viewfinder up to the eye, right hand on the camera body, left hand bracing the lens body, and elbows not bracing against my own body.
As you can see, the primitive stabilization of the EF Mark I cannot hold up against its descendants. The EF Mark II, however, fares the best, with a shake softened to a gentle sway that works well with video. The two RF lenses were a little worse, with the RF 100-400 being a bit better in my opinion, which could be down to the weight reduction. Despite Canon's IBIS purportedly working with the lenses for extra stability, it seemed to me that the R10 did a little better here, especially with the RF 400. This could be down to the lighter camera body, or it could be the R7's IBIS does not play well with these full frame lenses. Or it could be that Canon's IBIS in general works against longer focal lengths. As a bonus, let's compare the RF 100-500 stabilization to the EF Mark II with the 1.4 extender. As you can see, the Mark II is still more stable than the RF 500. As complex as they are, the stabilizers in these lenses produce noise, some more than others. Let's take a listen now. The two RF lenses are nearly silent here, while the two EF lenses make unpleasant gurgling sounds that can be picked up by the camera mounted microphones in quieter scenes. Bear this in mind if you use live audio in your video clips. The minimum focus distance, or MFD, is a very important aspect of lenses and one that is often overlooked when shopping. These lenses have different MFDs at different focal lengths, but it's the one at maximum length that's the biggest limiter. While three of these lenses have similar MFDs of around three feet, the EF Mark I's is double at almost six. Having personally used this lens for 16 years, there's been countless times where an uncommon bird unexpectedly popped up close by or an interesting insect landed just outside arm's reach. And due to the long MFD, I was unable to get a shot. Those instances have rarely happened with the other three lenses, and in my opinion, this issue alone makes the EF Mark I much less desirable in comparison, for general wildlife photography at least. In this test, I attempted to stay autofocused on the same spot of the fake flower while stepping as closely to it as possible. In addition to the EF Mark I's poor showing here, notice the RF 400's superior performance. Autofocus is next. This works differently in video and stills mode, so we'll start with a more consistent series of tests using a tripod and fake birds. All Canon R series bodies, except the R, RP, and R100, have animal eye tracking, so you should have a similar or better experience to what you see here, unless you're using one of those three. As before, I'll be using the Canon R7 for this test. All four were able to complete this test, though the EF Mark I stands out with how jittery and slow it is. I also noticed the two EF lenses focus hunted more than their two RF counterparts. 
The RF lenses were quick and snappy as well, though the EF Mark II put in a good showing. Here we perform an eye tracking video servo autofocus test, with the lens focused on a fixed spot in the distance. A living being repeatedly pokes its head in midway between the lens and the initial target. All four lenses were successfully able to perform human eye tracking, though the EF Mark I was noticeably slower and less smooth. The two RF lenses were the fastest, and focus hunted less. Finally, a real-world test for stills mode autofocus with wild squirrels and birds. These animals are varying distances from the camera and with varying objects in the way, so unfortunately this is not a controlled test, but it will give you an idea of the capability of each of these lenses when it comes to wildlife. I've exposed a little brighter than normal for these scenes since the R7's autofocus can struggle with lower light. As you could see, all four lenses were again capable of being used with the R7's autofocus and successfully tracked wild animals. It may be hard to tell, but the Mark I was slowest at it, though still successful, while the two RF lenses were again the fastest. Bokeh is a word derived from Japanese that describes the often desirable blur or softness of an out-of-focus background that provides separation for the actual subject. The distance of the subject from its background, the distance of the lens from the subject, and the depth of field provided by the aperture all contribute towards producing this effect, with closer focusing distances, brighter apertures, and larger camera sensors offering the most. 
Out-of-focus lights in the background can add some pleasing spherical elements to your scene, though the actual quality of both spears and background blur is often dependent on the lens specifics. Here we'll look at the bokeh these four lenses can produce by focusing on a table leg approximately 8 feet away in the foreground. A small Christmas tree about 15 feet away in the background provides a green base color and multiple light sources. As with the image quality test, the camera itself is attached to a tripod which stays consistent in height and distance from the subject. We'll test the fully extended lenses from f5.6 to f8. As you could see, all the lenses were capable of blurring the background and producing light spears under these conditions, and the quality of the blur was pretty similar. The light spears of the EF Mark I, however, were noticeably more angular than the rest, and also produced some misshapen spears at f5.6. The RF400 had some misshapen spears as well at f8, though the rest otherwise looked good. The EF Mark II and RF500 produce similar results, with the edge at 400mm going to the RF lens, though some slightly oblong spears occurred at 500mm and f7.1. Having used all four of these lenses in the field, I could say anecdotally only the RF100-500 has ever stood out to me in regards to particularly beautiful backgrounds. While all four can produce decent bokeh, keep in mind the RF 100-400mm with its darker aperture range will have a tougher time outside of pseudo macro distances. Flaring, while an occasional artistically useful tool, is generally unwelcome in most people's photos and videos. While lens hoods are useful in shading the front element from stray light beams, these four telephoto lenses also have some sort of special coating or special lens element intended to reduce or eliminate unintentional flaring. While this will not be a robust test, here we will aim each hoodless lens at the periphery of a late afternoon sun to see if we can produce some flaring. EF Mark I appeared to be by far the most susceptible to flaring in this scenario. And while the Mark II was a big improvement, the two RF lenses edged that one out as well. However, a lens hood, which all three L-series lenses include, will provide an easy and effective solution, and third-party hoods for the RF 100-400 are relatively inexpensive. So what's the verdict on all these lenses? You've probably seen enough to draw your own conclusions, but I'll give my own opinions and recommendations based on my personal experiences using these lenses for wildlife. When speaking of value, bear in mind I am considering only the US prices here, so value may be different in your own country. The EF 100-400 Mark I held up much better than I expected in these tests, especially in light of the model's reputation for softness reportedly from earlier copies. However, the more primitive autofocus and stabilization, while still usable on modern cameras, are not up to par with the rest of the options here, and noisy as well. I've noticed that focus hunts noticeably more than the others in busier scenes too. It's also not compatible with certain features of the newer R bodies, though these are unlikely to be deal breakers. If you're on a budget and really value build quality, weather sealing, and need all the light you can get, and also do little to no handheld video work, don't shoot small birds or fast moving subjects, 
don't need to shoot subject close to you, and don't mind the trombone style zoom, I would say a used copy of the EF 100-400 Mark I, provided it's one of the newer manufacturers, is indeed a decent value option. If any of these caveats sound iffy to you though, I would recommend the RF 100-400 instead. The RF 100-400 has a reputation of being a budget champion of sorts in this lens class, which is well demonstrated in these tests. The autofocus is blazing fast, accurate, and quiet, and it's nearly as sharp as the much more expensive L-series lenses. You get the very handy in-camera zoom and focus scale, though the older analog manual zoom of the EF lenses can be more reliable. The missing stabilizer options, tripod collar, and focus limiter aren't a big deal in my opinion. And while built more cheaply than the other three, this lens is still reasonably solid. The weight and size reduction benefits I can't overstate enough. Not only can it fit in smaller bags and be easily handheld by individuals with less strength, even those who can handle the heavier lenses will appreciate the lessened strain when it comes to longer hikes or extended shots on a particular subject. Although I wouldn't trust the weather sealing of the other lenses in moderate rain anyways, the complete lack of sealing for this lens could be an issue for those in dusty, humid, dewy, or misty environments. The dark aperture range is this lens's biggest drawback, and while modern R-series lenses handle high ISOs much better than their DSLR predecessors, if you regularly shoot photos in low light conditions, such as dark forests, blue hours, or indoors for subjects you can't drop shutter speeds for, I would at least consider the EF 100-400 Mark I over this if you're budget limited. Otherwise, the technological improvements make the RF 100-400 an easy low cost recommend. The EF 100-400 Mark II is simply a better version of the Mark I in almost every way except weight. The autofocus is fairly quiet and approaches the speed of the RF lenses, although in my experience it does focus hunt more frequently. The image quality is better than the RF 100-400 and close to that of the RF 100-500, and only degrades a bit if you use the Mark III version of the 1.4 extender. The twist zoom helps immensely with video or tripod usage compared to its ancestor, and the image stabilization is the best of all four. That stabilization comes at the cost of an audible gurgling noise, however, something to bear in mind if you shoot live audio with your lens stabilized video footage. While I would not recommend buying this lens at its new price as it bumps too close to the RF 100-500, at the used or refurbished price of around $1,300 plus another $70 to $100 for the EF to RF adapter, in my opinion, this is the lens to get out of these four. Unless you're on a tighter budget, want the absolutely best image quality in a slightly lighter, more compact package, can't handhold the weight, or film live audio from a camera-mounted microphone. Finally, the RF 100-500. It's a further evolution of the EF 100-400 Mark II, and discounting price, I would consider this the best overall package. You won't have to fumble with an EF to RF adapter, you get all the modern interface features, and you have the best balance between weight, focal length, and build quality. The image quality is the best of the four, though not by a massive amount, but if you use a 1.4 extender on the EF lenses to make up the extra focal length, the RF 100-500 is sharper again in comparison, even if you have to crop to match. The EF lenses are a bit brighter through some of their shared focal lengths, but not by much. Coming from the EF Mark II, I was disappointed with the less effective lens stabilization, but at the least it is much quieter. If you end up needing even more reach out of this lens though, keep in mind the 300mm minimum focal length, which prevents compact storage, unlike the three other lenses we tested today. If you can find this lens in the vicinity of $2,000 or under, this is an easy recommend. 
But unless money is no object, or you find the numerous small improvements over the EF100-400 Mark II altogether worth the extra cost, I would recommend a used copy of that lens instead. I hope you found all or part of this extended comparison useful in your own search for a Canon telephoto. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe.